Happy New Year. We have a new year, and we have 36 devices that are tuning in with us this morning. Glad you are all with us. We have a new year. We have a new memory verse for this uh, month. We have new family devotionals. And so um, I want to just plug this right out of, the, out of the gate. We have these available on the table in the foyer. Our family devotionals are also available on our church website, sandspringschurchofchrist.com. And so our memory verse for this month, Acts 2.38, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you think about our country, our nation, uh, our society, how many things are wrong with our society, how many problems we have, and, and, and you try to figure out and think, well, you know, where is it, where is it really wrong? Where are the, are, the, are the biggest problems? Where would be maybe a biggest solution to our, our nation's problems? Um, you come to one that really rises to the top is with our families. The, the biological earthly family, and of course God created us this way, but our families are the cornerstone of any society. And our, if you look, want to look at a society's problems, uh, if they have problems, there are probably issues in the family and solutions could come from focusing on the family. So our theme this year, the elders have um, been uh, thinking and praying on, you know, what direction for us as a church family, is there something we could focus on this year? And so this is uh, something they've really given a lot of thought to. And in uh, the year 2024, each quarter there will be a little different uh, element to this, but all of them will be focusing on family. And so your, your family that you came here with today, maybe not all your families here, maybe you're a family, you might just be a family of one at your house, but you still have family members that you have connections with and influence on, and of course the church family here. But if you're uh, empty nesters, you may just be a family of two, no children, or you may have children at home. All varieties of our families, we want to give that extra uh, thought and focus this year. So the first quarter will be about our families focusing on God's holy word. And we'll start out in Psalm uh, 119 and verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. This past, uh, about a week ago, Stephanie and I were uh, at, at a friend, uh, co-worker's house who had recently moved. And we had, we had gone there a week before and helped her <clears throat> move a number of items into her house. And then last week we went back. She had a couple items that she didn't need and wanted to get rid of. So we were going to take those and then we were helping her adjust her dining room table. And her dining room table is a custom table. It has a base. And then the top <clears throat> uh, completely detaches from the base of the table. It's all wood. And so the way it attaches um, to the base, there it, it sits down on four bolts. And you have nuts that, that lock down. And then you, there are also four screws that need to be screwed up. Uh, through holes in the base into the bottom of the of the table. And so we're trying to help her put that together. And we need a Phillips screwdriver. And so she just recently moved in. She didn't, she, you know, could not find, did not have a Phillips screwdriver. That's all we need to finish this project is a Phillips screwdriver. So I go out to my car. I'm thinking, surely I, got, I have one. In the vehicle, there are all kinds of things in the vehicle that don't even need to be in the vehicle. Surely there's a little, I mean, <clears throat> in our house, we have your regular Phillips screwdrivers. Got different ones of those. We have um, a little, Stephanie got a little rechargeable, powered, a handy little screwdriver that uh, is wonderful. All different types of, of uh, bits. Then we have, of course, you know, a, a powered Got a cordless, have a corded, um, have little little uh, 
kind of pliers that fold out into even a, even a, a little set of these are these are uh, stocking stuffers, folks. Just a little little plier set that has a one little Phillips screwdriver bit. That's all I need. All my house is full of these things. I just need one. And we can't find one. We had to use a uh, had to use, we had to sacrifice a kitchen butter knife. In order, and we didn't get them screwed all the way in, but enough, enough to, at least it was better than nothing. Let me ask you something. How many Bibles do you have? How many Bibles do you have? Um, if you have a smartphone, you may utilize scripture on this and have different translations you can use. You may have a couple different Bible apps on your phone um, the older you are, my guess is the more Bibles you have. Some of us have Bibles from our, our, there are our parents' Bibles. We've inherited Bibles, have our own Bibles, have a Bible when we were baptized, got to have a study Bible. I mean, we have Bibles. And those are the light to where we're going. This life's journey are Bibles. We may have them, but are we using them? Are they with us? That's what we're wanting our families to focus on Scripture, not just here, but away from here, at home. So just because I had a Phillips screwdriver, I didn't have it with me when I needed it. And we need to have our Bibles more in the forefront. We need to be using them uh, daily. And so let's go to Psalm 119. Um, you can turn to Psalm 119, verse 1, but before I, I show that to you, I want to ask you, if you have children at home or maybe grandchildren, um, what do you want them to grow up to be? You know, in our society, uh, there are different careers that, that parents are proud of, that their children, you know, are, are in this field. We, we tend to want our children to grow up and, and do well. So we want them to be educated. We want them to be successful. You know, do you want your child to grow up and be wealthy or do you want your child to grow up and be famous what dreams do you have for your children this psalm says blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the lord do we believe that blessed this is good this means good this is what you want this is this is something to be proud of if you're if if your child is walking in the law of the Lord, how good is that? That's my question. Because we want our children to be successful, talented, do well in life. You know, it, sometimes that involves education or career or, or how, how are you doing, you know, family and grandchildren. All these things that we look at, at that are earthly. But do we really believe if they walk in the law of the Lord? It's so easy when kids are young and even grandkids to be at the ballpark and we want them to succeed on the ball field. We want them to succeed on the basketball court. We want them to be, we want them to be winners. And yet scripture doesn't really talk about that. Scripture does talk about walking in the law of the Lord and walking with God. Psalm 119 37. By the way, if you want a really good chapter in the Bible that uh, reminds you how wonderful God's Word is, Psalm 119. Verse 37. Turn my eyes from, from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Do we, have, do we have things that capture our attention and distract us in life that are, in the end... On Judgment Day, we would look at and say, you know, that's kind of worthless now. It's kind of pointless now. And for eternity, we're not going to look back and cherish our trophies or the, the earthly things that we, that we really enjoyed. Maybe trips we took, whatever it is you, you, you get excited about. Someday we will maybe understand how worthless those are. Um, a number of years ago, we some of us... Uh, went to Canada where we have a missionary that we helped, the, the Grenier's. And uh, so we would, took a trip up there to help them work on their church building, uh, a lot of remodeling. 
and a lot of building. And, and so um, we had three, the, the year that I'm talking about, we had three vehicles, minivans. And we're traveling up from Quebec City to where they are, which is a couple hour drive, seems like, maybe two and a half. And on this highway, I mean, we're just going for miles straight. On the highway, there are these fences, chain link kind of fences on the sides. And they're not just six foot, 10 foot. I mean, they're like 15, 20 foot high fences. And the fences are for moose. In, a, in America, we, have, we watch for deer, deer crossings. These are for moose. Because moose are dangerous when you hit them with a vehicle. Okay, So we're up there, and uh, we don't have moose here, so <clears throat> I want to see a moose. And we're looking. And honestly, yes, they have a lot of moose up there, but I, I think it's similar to we have a lot of deer. But if you go home, if you go on a trip today to Oklahoma City, do you think you'll see a deer? And if you did, you might have to be really looking. And so we're looking, we're watching. We're watching for moose. That's, I mean, I'm driving straight and see, I want to see a moose. And we're watching. And then somewhere on this, on this trip, Elliot notices something on the dash. And I can't even remember exactly what it was. I can't remember if it was uh, kilometers to my, if it was something kilometer related, something that I had been trying to figure out. And I finally did. I identified it on the dash. And so I was excited about that. And I was telling the passengers in our minivan about, look, I finally found it. Here it is. Meanwhile, we have these two-way radios that we're talking to each other in our other two vehicles. And uh, we, we hear the radio come on. What do you think about that moose? <laughs> distracted. Distracted. How much are we distracted? How much are our families distracted by life around us? Um, the things that we do, the... That maybe our responsibilities or our favorite pastimes, our activities. Psalm 119, verse 66 says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. We want our children to get good grades, we want them to get an education. Have you ever heard about someone being really, really smart, but they did not have common sense? That's something in our society. And when I say common sense, you know exactly what I mean. We want our children to have an education and have common sense, don't we? We want them to have both. But do we want them to have Worldly judgment and worldly knowledge or spiritual judgment and spiritual knowledge? Do we want them to have earthly judgment, earthly knowledge, or godly judgment? Sometimes godly judgment means I'm naive when it comes to the world. I might not know about certain things of the world. I might not be able to handle certain things a certain way of the world. But I know God and Jesus. I know where my help comes from. I know where my eternity is. Good judgment and knowledge. And, and I just remind you, earthly judgment, earthly knowledge is, is going to, to pass away. This was our scripture reading this morning, verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. When... Uh, when our girls were young, we would, you know, part of what you're doing when you're raising children is training them. And in some of the training, they would, they would not like what I'm telling them to do, and they would ask why. And when they're really young, it's kind of one thing. But when they, when they get to be about this size, and they're asking why. And they're not asking why. They're not just wanting to learn. They are... Um, they're not agreeing with the instruction given. I don't agree with that, Dad. And so as parents, we get kind of riled up about that. And uh, sometimes the 
only good answer is because I said so. Because I said so. Trying to train them to be a good human being, but honestly train them to be obedient to whose word? Parents. Dad's word. Mom's word. So, which is okay, that's part of it, training your child to be obedient. But in the end, when your child grows up, think about it. It's really not the end goal that they obey dad's word, mom's word, grandma and grandpa. Because we're flawed. We're sinful. We fall short. We are biased. And my word won't get my kid to heaven. But God's word will. God's word. We want them to keep God's word. Verse 10, with my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wonder from your commandments. I've stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This should be, verse 11, to, to help our children store up God's word in them, in their heart, should be a major goal of our families at home. We can, we can make headway with it coming here for Bible class. By the way, Sunday mornings, 9.30, Bible class. 9.30 is not that early unless you stay up late Saturday night. Did you know that? 9.30 is later than most all of us are doing something important Monday morning. Even you folks who are retired, most of you are up and doing well way before 9.30, aren't you? I've heard you say that. Not all of you. Some of you. Some are like my mom. She enjoyed sleep, and sleep enjoyed her, and uh, retirement didn't change that. So, but 9.30, Sunday morning, 7 o'clock, Wednesday nights. But also at home, this should be a major, major goal of ours. Deuteronomy, so here's the classic passage on teaching children about God. From when God is establishing his nation of Israel. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them. Let me stop for a minute. <clears throat> it is good and wonderful... I know one of our classes this morning, I think fourth and fifth grade had 11 kids in it this morning, which is, which is quite a bit more than usual. It's wonderful. We need our kids in Sunday school. We need them here. Wednesday nights, we have classes for all ages of children. We need our children in Bible class and we need Bible class teachers and helpers. We need those soldiers serving. It's wonderful. And we also need it at home because this scripture says you teach them to your children. You teach them. Fathers, you teach them. Mothers, we'll get to that in a minute. Teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the door posts of your house and on your gates. Teach them four different types of situations, you know, getting up, laying down, going somewhere, four different types, and then four different ways to remind you. Reminders. Do you ever use reminders? I have to have reminders. I cannot remember things, even things that I think I'm going to remember I'm learning, Elliot, you are capable of forgetting that. And some things that are really, really important, I make all kinds of reminders. Um, sometimes, in fact, when I have something here I need to take home that's really important that I get home, usually something that Stephanie is Stephanie's and she cares about and I'm really needing to get that home, I will put my car keys in a, so if it's in the kitchen, I will put them on top of the refrigerator. So I do not forget. And I may also have a note. And I may have a timer. And I have all kinds of reminders to remind me. That's what God is saying here. This is so important. It's not diligently. It's more than just, you know, here and there. 
diligently. We need to teach our children. Are we doing this? And if we're not, I, I want to challenge you regardless in, in, in this year, let's work on this. Let's work on our families spiritually. Uh, and so these next scriptures, uh, let me run through this part. And primarily I want to, uh, I want to encourage you to do devotionals at home. Now, some of our families were already doing family devotionals and they have resources and it's wonderful. It's about God's word. This is just, this is just a way, a type. Um, but I want to encourage you doing family devotionals at home. Even if you're a family of one, having your time with God. So this first one, children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother. I want to encourage our children. If your parent or grandparent says, all right, let's come in. Let's do a family devotional. Children, I want to encourage you to support that. Support that. It may not be at a time that you want to do it. It may not be, you may not feel like your dad or your mom is doing a good job, or maybe they said something that maybe they, maybe they didn't know this or that, but if they're trying to lead you with God's word at home, children, whatever age you are, support that. Support your parents, honor them. Verse four, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, um, we are primarily responsible for this. We're the leaders of our families, leaders of our homes. We're to be leaders in the church. And this primarily falls on us, even though other things you, we may, you know, mom may take the lead on, on other things. But fathers, I'm reminding you, God expects this of us. This is our responsibility. And, and I will step out and say, I need to do better in this. I have been doing better than before, and I need to do better than I've been currently doing as a father. And I imagine I'm not the only one. So we need to do better, and we can. 2 Timothy 3.14, here's a... Uh, I want to read a couple passages. These are regarding Timothy. And Paul says, as for you, continuing what you've learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings. This is scripture he's talking about from childhood. Some of you, and I've, I'm old enough and have been here long enough, I've been able and privileged to watch. Some of you, uh, I watched from babies grow up in this church. And I know for a fact that you don't, you cannot remember when you first learned about God because it was from birth. From birth. From, from, from a baby, you were taught about God and Jesus. And so uh, this is just a reminder right here that that's the ideal. Uh, it doesn't mean you're a second class citizen if you didn't really learn about God till you were older. It doesn't mean that. It just means if we can do it, if we can raise up our children knowing about God from youth, that, that's, that's wonderful. And we, we want to do that. Well, Paul, notice, he points out, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that, fir that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. Paul, uh, Timothy did not learn about God, it seems. He did not learn from his father. Though he had a father who was alive, his father was a Greek. We know that from the book of Acts when Paul first encounters Timothy. His father was a Greek, but his mother was a Jew. He learned about God from his mother. And she probably learned about God from her mother. And many of us, many here, you learned about God from a godly woman, mother or grandmother. And maybe even, maybe even uh, one from Sunday school had an important impression on you. But mothers, I want to tell you, you may be a single mother at home. Teach your children. You may, be, you're, you may have a, the dad is at home or you may have a husband. And you mothers, ladies, sometimes you're the one to take the lead on this. And I don't mean, I don't mean lead in a, in a way that's taking over. I mean 
you may be the one to help bring about family devotionals in your home. You may be the one more interested or, or uh, you've remembered it better or you're more disciplined or more spiritually or have a greater heart for it. Whatever it is, ladies, mothers, help teach our children at home. And you can do it, of course, in a way, uh, if, you're, if there's a husband in the home, you can do it in a way that honors him too. So, children. Let's go back to children for a minute. Paul said to Timothy, Timothy was a young man, but he said, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. And Paul is just pointing out that just because you're young doesn't mean you can't be an example for those who are older. And so I want to say to children, children, you may be the ones who get your family to do a devotional at home. Children may be the ones to say, can we do our family devotional tonight? And I want to remind you children to do it in a way that's respectful. Honor your parents, obey your parents. But I want to challenge our children because remember God said, unless you humble yourself like a child, you can't enter into heaven. We can learn some things from children. And sometimes our children have a greater heart for God than we do. Sometimes their love for God is stronger or more pure or more innocent or less distracted. And it's not uncommon for a family to be in God's house on Sunday morning and it's really because of the children. Because a child said, can we go? Are we going? And so children, God can use you to help your family. So do that. Do what you can do. And then Deuteronomy 4, 9, take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. So we're talking about grandparents as well. And I want to close by pointing out from this verse, and then let's read this next one as well. Isaiah 38, 18. For Sheol, which re references the grave, this is those who've died does not thank you. Death does not praise you. Those who go down to the pit do not hope for your faithfulness. The living. Let me pause there for a second. Um, so this is about this life. And uh, without getting into, you know, what, what were the uh, Jews at that time? What did they think about life after death? The point that the writer is saying is, when I'm alive in this life, I can praise you. So verse 19, the living, the living, he thanks you as I do this day. The father makes known to the children. What? Your faithfulness. So this one is not about teaching children who God is. Or who Jesus is. This is about teaching children what God has done. And I want to remind you, I've seen this before. Maybe you've seen this. Teach me about Jesus because I'm going to need him. We're not just, we don't want our children to just be able to rattle off facts about Scripture. We want them to turn to God, to have a personal relationship with God and Jesus. We want them to know what it is, that He's real, that He cares about them. And we as adults have to share how good God has been to us. That's also what we have to impress on our children. If your children know about God, but they don't, they don't have a relationship with God, then we've missed something really, really important. We've missed something. So we need to help them understand that. I want to, uh, I do want to encourage you this year with Bible class, help getting our families, children to Bible class. But at home, are we opening the word of God at home? Can we do our devotionals more at home? And so they, they, it's available to us. It, it's like something you need, but are you using it? And a day is going to come. Uh, a day is going to come when this life will be over. And we will have regrets of what we didn't do more. How, how we didn't impress more on our children. Maybe we weren't, we weren't a better example. We wish we could go back. And so this year, 2024, let's focus on our families. And to start with. Let's get them focused on God's word. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. 
Um, if there's something that we could help you with, uh, lift up to God in prayer for you. If there's one that you're, you'd like to give your life to Christ this morning, let us help you. If, if you would come while we stand and sing. I know the Lord will find a way. Right.